All right, it's Tuesday, March 7th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio ch channel from the rooftop of the Blanco Lirio Global World Headquarters, Tuesday, 7th March. Um, I've decided to begin to remove the snow off of the roof of the headquarters based on the forecast. We got heavy rain coming on Friday. So we got six more inches of snow last night. We've got probably... Well, this roof is probably at its maximum design snow load right now. When this rain comes on Friday and starts filling up this sponge, the snow loads on the roof are gonna skyrocket. So like we were talking about before, this is an older house, older construction over here, newer construction right here. This roof has got, is up to code, close to 60 pounds per square foot. I'm not too concerned about this roof, but the way this roof is designed, it's gonna slump right down and fall on the old roof. And it, I doubt it the way that this house was the Budweiser remodel, that this roof was strengthened to handle the impact loads from the snow from this roof. Anytime you got snow coming off of one roof onto another, it's called an impact load and you gotta account for that. So with the rainwater added to this snow by Friday, that'll bring, right now I'm estimating a snow load on the roof about 45 pounds per square foot, which it's handling okay at the moment, but it's right at the limit. Uh, and at 60 pounds per square foot with the addition of that water, it'll be way overstressed. So the best thing to do is just to start removing the snow, get the sponge off of here, get the weight off of the roof and, um, then let the rain do the rest of its work without soaking into this snow and becoming such a such a heavy weight bunch of snow. So because the weight of snow varies greatly based on its water density. So let's see, a couple of questions from yesterday's. Uh, first off, uh, Allie the dog was uh, returned to Andy, the owner. <laughs> The dog remembered me when I didn't remember the dog. We'd been camping before, and so uh, Allie had gotten out of the house probably a mile or two away and gotten caught up in these snow banks here and was getting in the way of everything. So we brought her into the truck, warmed her up, and called Andy and got back home just fine. Electricity is back on, but internet is still out. So uh, the Comcast internet ain't going to be back for another week or two. Some frustrating phone calls there, but... Verizon is still coming through loud and clear. Regarding the use of the generators, liquid propane, or the question was, why don't you get a whole house generator? Well, you gotta remember, you're dealing with primarily a cheap airline pilot. So uh, the whole house generator option is a $10,000 plus option. Where I can just do this effectively the same thing with a thousand dollar generator and a couple of extension cords. What's the purpose of electrifying this whole house if you don't got TV or internet or any other any of the other services? They're not going to work during these outages, whether you got power or not from a generator. So save money, go Honda. I say, and I like to keep gas instead of LP because I like the portability of the gas, and then I go use the generator for other purposes out at the hangar or out camping. So, so that's that. Anyways, we're gonna keep digging this out. It might take a while. I got a couple of reserves on call. See if they'll come up and help me. Maybe the neighbor kid. I've got a little bit of time. We got a big break in the weather tomorrow before the rain hits and I gotta get this stuff off of the roof to avoid a potential structural failure. And I hope everybody in the area does something about their roofs before this rain comes. Thanks for your support. See you here on the rooftop.